What's happening, weirdos? This is Malik Ellisal, who I recorded with several months ago, but I've been working with. He's been opening for me from time to time. I met him in uh, Montreal, and I was blown away. He is so funny. You may not know who he is, but you will. And this is you finding out about him. In fact, right up top here, I want to play a clip. I believe this is from The Moth. This is a clip of Malik being super, super hilarious. So you can have a little taste of who he is and how great he is before we get into our conversation. So Katie, roll that clip. I am looking for peace of mind, man. I've been, I've been, I've been going to a therapist for four years. I think it's a scam. <laughs> At least I don't have a good therapist. Like I, cause I didn't like get referred like by a doctor. Like I just like went online. Like I just like Googled help. Please, <laughs> please help. And then it took me to a website, and on the website it was like, write out a list of your problems so we can use that to like match you up. And I was like, all right. And I selected anxiety, because that's, that's what I was having. And then it was like, write out the anxiety, explain what that feels like so that we can use that to better match you up to somebody. And I was like, it's anxiety, it's not gonna make sense. But I was like, okay. I'm not as good of a Muslim as I was raised to be, but I still feel like a good person, you know? And it's, I feel conflicted, because in school, they taught us that everything is written before we're even born. Like all my decisions are made for me. So it's like, am I just doomed to make these mistakes that God wrote for me? Like, like what if Allah judges me unfairly? And then I submitted that. <laughs> and then they were like, you should talk to Helen about this. Helen, <laughs> Helen's good for shit like this. She's, <laughs> she's on top of it, trust me. And I was like, Helen, are you even listening to me? What, did, what is Helen gonna do? You couldn't have brought me like a Dr. Mahmoud El Shabazz, somebody <laughs> to just tell me to pray. Brother, your life is haram. Of course you feel terrible. <laughs> At least he understands. What's, I'm gonna be in a meeting with Helen. She's gonna be like, tell me more about this Allah character. He <laughs> sounds toxic. I, I mean, why would you hang out with a guy like that? <laughs> who is he to judge you? And I'm like, well, he's actually, he's the only one who can, so. <laughs> I mean, he's the best. He's great. We've been sitting on this one for a while. Uh, I'm glad it's finally out there. He's so funny, so interesting. I'm glad you guys are here. A couple things to mention up top. We moved our YouTube channel. So if you like watching this podcast on youtube.com, uh, we decided to kind of clean things up, make uh, Pete Holmes on YouTube kind of the sketch stand-up channel. And now You Made It Weird, when that's the name of the channel, You Made It Weird, will be its own standalone podcast channel, kind of keep things clean. Do me a favor. <laughs> do me a favor. Would you do me a favor? Just subscribe. Just subscribe, like, subscribe, all that stuff so we can start building that channel and help people find the show, discover the show, but also keep that sweet, sweet show flowing into your sweet, sweet feed. So go on YouTube and find the channel. You made it weird and uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff people are always saying. Um, but that's exciting. So check that out. Um, what else? Please watch my special. It's called I Am Not For Everyone. It's on Netflix. I uh, worked really hard on it. Hope you like it. And also try a Pete's Pick. It's, it's, the, it's the giving season. It's the giving season. So why not give your favorite weirdo some Pete's Picks? And what better to give than something to make them beautiful, radiant, glowing, healthy, vibrant from our friends at Living Libations. I'm always saying... Living Libations is a great way to support this show because you can get something big. You can do what Val and I did, which is overhaul our entire medicine cabinet, our whole beauty regimen with skin care, hair care, teeth care, eye care, baby care, with a natural, natural, meaning you'll recognize the ingredients, high and alternative to random chemical nightmares. But you can also, maybe you don't want to do a full overhaul, you can just buy a tongue scrubber. <laughs> buy a tongue scraper. Support the show, support your, your mouth health, and get a tongue scraper. Meaning, this is a great way. Use that promo code, support the show, support your body. Because like I always say, I've been very careful about what I eat, but I wasn't being careful about what I was putting on my body, which of course ends up in your body. And these things can be very, very toxic, very, very unhealthy. Living Libations makes natural alternatives that are not only easy to pronounce and understand, but are badass. Their exfoliating uh, face wash is the most powerful, gritty, 
best working face wash scrub that I've ever found in my life. It's incredible. Use it before you shave, makes it such a better experience. Also their best, their shaving cream is incredible. So natural and wonderful. You can rub it into your face after you're done shaving and use it as an aftershave. That's how hydrating and wonderful it is. I also use their best skin ever moisturizer. We use their Love the Sun zinc-based sunblock for Leela to keep those chemicals off our baby. Believe me, whatever you're using in your daily beauty regimen, Living Libations has a wonder, wonderful alternative that is good for your body. So get into it. Go to livinglibations.com slash weird. Support your body. Support the show. You'll get 15% off livinglibations.com slash weird. And no surprise, this one's empty, of course, because I'm always drinking Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a productivity drink. It's not an energy drink. It has matcha, so there's about as much caffeine as half a cup of coffee, but it has adaptogens to bring you down, to round out the edges of that sometimes too much caffeine experience, softens the caffeine, and then it also has a wonderful blend of nootropics that help you create, help you think. Basically, Magic Mind is flow state in a bottle. I travel with it in a little baggie so I can get through TSA with it. Uh, that's how important it is to me. I take it before my shows. I take it before my podcasts. I take it before I face my inbox. Sometimes you just want to get into that dual state of up and relaxed. It's the perfect flow state drink to drop you into flow, get you working, fight procrastination, f fight brain fog, and also drink less coffee. I drink it with my coffee, which is my buddy James. That's what he did as well to balance out that coffee. But I also take it by itself. Sometimes it's all I need. Magic Mind is a magical elixir. It gets you dialed in, not wired. Total game changer. As you guys know, I discovered it and then reached out to them to work together. So this is not just some empty. None of these are. These are things that I love. It's not just reading copy. I'm telling you about something, some things that have made my life better. And Magic Mind is absolutely one of those. We have a wonderful offer for weirdos at Magic Mind. Go to magicmind.co slash weird and use my discount code at checkout weird for a limited 20% off your first order. Do yourself a favor and subscribe because once you try it, the more you use it, the more it builds, the better it works. Absolute game changer magicmind.co slash weird and use promo code weird at checkout. All right, everybody, be sure to subscribe on YouTube to the new You Made It Weird channel. And in the meantime, enjoy my friend Malik Ellisall. Get into it. I really like what, it's kind of sad. You ever have someone compliment me and you get sad because it's so meek? Oh, look at how nice. It's, so, it's like, are you about to cry? It's, it's so nice. It was a garage, you know. I think Louie. Oh, God. Oh, my oh God. God. Redo the whole thing. She doesn't want me talking about. Redo the walk -in. Scandalized comedian Louis C.K. <laughs> but Louis did have a bit where it's like somebody's so happy for you, it sounds like they're in pain. They're like, oh, oh I, that's I wonderful. Oh, God. It's very funny. <sighs> what is this here? That's for you. That's what is this? The magic mind? That's your magic mind. Do I baby? just chug this? What do I do with it? Shake this? it first. I'm gonna chug it. You don't it. have to shake it in the jerk off motion. There you go. <laughs> There's only one way to shake things. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I but you don't have to make the face. When you I was a kid, I was face. like, you know what it had to be the best part of being a well, no, I can't say that on the back of, of mentioning Louie. But I was just like, what was the masturbation policy for cavemen? Like, were they ashamed of it? I'm just saying we're cavemen. We're cavemen. Pre-society. If I feel it right now. Yeah, we're hunting. You're a little tense and you jerk it. Is it like blowing your nose? I this is real. This is a real question. I, Meaning, I don't know. I'm taking it as real. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. But I, when I was young, I was so obsessed with masturbation. I was like, it must have been great to be a caveman because before like the church or anything, maybe it was just like waving hello. <laughs> <laughs> just you just do it anytime. I think probably you were just always a little bit playing with it. I don't As even know if it, I don't even know if it was. I feel like it's probably like our like our society make, it, that we make it ritualistic now because we Jerking need to it? because we need to go away from people. But before we probably just were like just constantly always touching just a little, little diddle, bit. just a little just a little diddle. couple jacks here. A couple and what about jacks taking there? a shit? Like if we're cavemen. <laughs> 
you were always... you, you had stuff coming out of every every hole at all times. Give it a chug, little bit of grapefruit flavor, magic mind. Whoa. Delicious. I'm glad you drank it. The episodes are better when people drink I it. I wanted to drink it. I no, was... you mentioned it that at Largo. Stop being so neat. You can just throw it away. I want it to look nice. I want this whole thing to keep it. It looks so nice in here. It looks great in here. Now I'm realizing it's this. I'm like, is this, is this voice anti Semitic? Because that's a very old joke. You're so far away. Is that I'm trying to I'm so trying to make sure is he in the camera? I'm just trying to think feng shui style. What it, it looks I'm just trying to find my You be you. Boston University, man, be you. I just want to make sure the camera's getting you. You're okay. Yeah. You're oh. so... Is this voice not okay anymore? I do I do an old Jew all the time. Old no Jew matter. voice is one... Old Jew voice. An old Jewish voice. Don't say old Jew voice. Old Jew voice. That sounds like old a great... Old Jew voice over there. It rapper. Like, <laughs> like old dirty bastard, old Jew voice. Yeah, he was killer. the guy... Yeah, the Wu-Tang Clan was like... <laughs> Next oh, next time you can do a verse I'm next time. Freestyle. Let me in there. <laughs> There's a free, your hat's too big. You I'm gonna walk in. away from this area. As as you're a Muslim and I'm not Jewish, we're walking away from this yeah, riff. Yeah, we're back. walking away. Yeah, right away. Hands up. So happy to see. <laughs> Did you just say God is great? God is great. Okay, subtitles on. I'm here to translate. God is. You got it. There's not a lot I can translate. God is great, but it's on. I think it directly translates to God is big. Really? Allahu Akbar. God is bigger. Like God, God is, is greater. greater. Yeah. Well, my daughter's five, and sometimes I'll say like, um, "Great," meaning large, and she just does. She, that's like a big loop to throw her on. Oh, I see. Because she's yeah. new to the language, mm -hmm. and she's like, I'll, I, "I forget what the example was," but I was like, "And that's great," and she's like, "It's not great." And I was like, "Because it wasn't good. It was something bad that was like a great was, big evil or something." Oh, she's like, I don't but know. Yeah, I'm talking to my daughters great. about great big uh, evils. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to be You're afraid to of, baby. Have a great day. <laughs> it's a crazy be. place. Was there anything else like that? That uh, oh yeah, constantly. like other like a word that you use. Well, this is in my act, but she calls chopsticks chompsticks, which I'm just like that's so much more correct. Chompsticks. Yeah, you don't chop with them. You got to do this as Seinfeld. You don't chop with them. You chop with them. <laughs> Honey. They're chopsticks. Why are they called chopsticks? Are, who called them chop? We called them chopsticks. They didn't. Chinese people didn't call them chopsticks. There's no way they called them chopsticks. Katie, I hate to Rogan you right now, but yeah. Jamie, would you look that you up? You got a little something right no. there. I just want to let you know beforehand. No. You got a little something. Yes, no. you do. No, I don't. All right. And no, I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> you Where is it? This is always hard. Where is it? You, well, okay, yeah, yep. I'm going up. up. There? Whoa. Whoa. You, you sniped that. I got it good. You felt that where it was. Happens. I didn't even point. You just, I just went like you got something. You we went, got it. Well, it, it was bulbous. <laughs> you felt it. Chopsticks. All right, so it says, it's unclear, but it's widely believed to have originated from the Chinese pigeon English term chop chop, meaning quickly. Or wait, oh, wait, wait, which isn't appropriate. Chop, chop? No. You can't say chop chop, like, and I'm all for that. This ain't this ain't the guy going, we can't even say yeah. chop chop anymore. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. No saying chop chop, but we do say chop sticks. Yeah. Like or quick. It could be from chow chow, another pigeon word meaning food. Chow chow. Uh, what word. does pigeon mean? Like I don't know. I've never heard that. Pigeon Chinese. Chinese pigeon English. English. All of Meaning this like, sounds racist. It, it sounds, all like, sounds like it's from racist.com. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are, yeah. What do you want? Racist.com <laughs> over there? Don't it, go to racist.com. Yeah. It just <laughs> redirects to lemonparty.com. <laughs> Chopsticks from the, from the pigeon chompsticks. I don't. Yeah. That <laughs> pigeon Chinese pigeon English sounds not okay. Pigeon English, yeah, it sounds like well, you're yeah. pecking at the language. You you don't speak yeah, it. Yeah, those 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 head bobbing. How are the Arab? Because you speak Arabic. Yeah. How are you guys, Arab speaking people, with the attempters? Because it's not an easy language. You know, from what, what I can tell, it's mostly lowercase j's. <laughs> <laughs> it's chachs and just. It's all chachs and just. I just I, mean not only is it hard to speak, but it's not in the uh, what is the word the script. It's not in the Western. It's not script. the same alphabet. Same a alphabet. lot of there's That's a lot of letters that I feel Arabs like it when non Arabs attempt Arabic. We think that's great. We think not. That's it's great. not like an eye roll. 
No, we get flattered, I'd say. Really? If, if, if it's like, if, if someone's making an effort. Yeah. If someone's making an actual effort, we're, we're psyched about it. But it, Not I've Not like France, where they're like, it's a jolly little Oh my, where they roll your eyes. Yeah, and then you like, guys are like, just thank speak English. you. They go, every, no, they'll get their friends, they'll be like, look at this guy. Yeah. It's because it's not. Cause wahad bira, wahad shay. Wahad bira, wahad yeah, shay. Wahad oh bira. my God. There we go. I'm just trying to impress you. Yeah, you That's works. all I got. Wahad bira, wahad one shay. beer, one Tea. That's amazing. Yeah, that's this is from is this from Israel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know I studied in Israel? Did we talk about that? You told you told me quickly that you were you spent the Ramadan in Israel. That's what it was, yeah. and I was so impressed that Suleiman would smoke a cigarette smoke before he would eat. And you told me that for Ramadan you can't smoke. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. Why can't you smoke? Because you can't really intake anything. What about air? I'm not trying to be funny. That's, I'm I've saying never like, thought about it like that. I mean, you're intaking light, sunlight, mm, vitamin D, it's air. No, uh, the, all of all of Islam falls apart because of this <laughs> podcast. No. Everyone's like, "Wait, <laughs> I fall apart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you, fall away. The you mic disintegrate." Falls. Um, no, of course you just, you're not supposed to ingest. You're not, you're not supposed to affect your being. What about coffee? No coffee. No. It's got to be a tense. That's hard. It is hard. No yeah. cigarettes. No coffee. No cigarettes. No coffee. Thirty days. No water. Yeah. It, no you wonder he was lighting up. Yeah, at yeah. night. He yeah. lit up at night. I, which yeah. I took to be like, what a fucking gangster move. It is. That he was like, I'm not even going to eat. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't believe you're not immediately. I was so American. I was in college. I was like, I'd have a piece of cake under a spotlight, you know, like to uh -huh. eat at the end of the day. I was like ready, waiting for Now you. I go a day without eating. It's not a big deal at all. But at that time in my life, I couldn't understand. I that. do it all the time when it's not Ramadan, but there's something about Ramadan that makes you like you're so yeah. in it that you're like, it, it's just part of what easier, you're doing. Right? It's. Um, I, I thought the collective might make it easier. It does. It makes parts of it easier, but it may, you are, it is on your mind. Yeah. It's still on your mind. You're like in a, like a mode of like, I'm. Like you're in the mire of not doing things. Yeah. You're like, you're seeing what Buddy. your your uh, your factory settings are. That's kind of yeah. what Ramadan is to me is like getting back to the factory settings, doing like a reset. That's you know so what I, mean? I was just thinking about that, like your natural state without like, Nicotine, let's be honest, a lot coffee, of, yeah, water, a lot of these things are drugs and, and food is, you know, uh, I'm not, I'm like the nine billionth person to yeah. point this out, but food is changing your state. And when you get naked, like I, I fast twice a week, which mm -hmm. I found out, uh, Muhammad fasted on the first and fourth. Fasted on Mondays. Mondays and Thursdays. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Which is what I do. So. Everyone's converting. <laughs> It's the hot new thing right now. Everybody, everybody's into Islam. Are people? Everybody's Muslim. Is there a, 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 is it spiking? A lot of people. Really? Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. Katie, can you make it a little cooler in here? Yeah. I'm wearing yeah. this And how's, how's where I'm holding the mic? It's great. It's, it's just good. like stand-up comedy. Yeah, you're good. good. I sometimes hold it too Would you put on close. 69 the funniest number? Great. <laughs> it's actually the <laughs> only funny number. I don't chuckle at 420. 69 gets me every time. Yeah, four, no, 420 I'm serious about. Go. <laughs> well, let's go there. You used to, what? okay, you're so much more than a, a Muslim, but I'm very interested in you had a period of no drugs, alcohol, pork. Then you had a time where you were eating no pork, but you were doing drugs and alcohol, and now you don't do drugs and alcohol or pork? Now, yeah, now. Well, tell me, what was that? What happened? There was after. You have a rumspringer? It was a, a, a solo mission. I kind of, <laughs> ev it was after the Islamic school, everybody kind of. So you went to Islamic high school? I went to Islamic kindergarten until the 12th grade, grade 12. The same school? Canada. Same school the whole time. I never went to another school. All Muslims? All Muslim school. Gender separated? Um, we had class together. I mean, uh -huh. when we pray, they prayed behind us. Right. Um, but pretty much the whole, yeah, it was, I was, I went to school with a lot of the people that I went to, I graduated with the same people I went to kindergarten with a lot of people. Wow. Yeah. Are you, you still know these people? Yeah, I still know them. It's yeah. It's going to have to be that way. I mean, that was your whole childhood. I'll always know them. Yeah. And, uh, it was just kind of a thing of where like I was in. Like, it was kind of like I knew that I wanted to do something, I guess, maybe in entertainment. And then that kind of was like, I was like, I don't know if this is, it was like hard to like, there was no way to get to it from my school. So I had to go outside of it. And then from there, I just started to meet different 
types of kids, Wait, theater so kids. Exactly what I'm sure your parents were worried would happen. 100% got corrupted by theater kids. Yeah, you, okay, so they, look, as a parent, I side with parents so much more now. Yeah. They're trying to give you like a certain uh, safe, because let's say drugs and alcohol, dangerous. Yes. I mean, I, not full stop, but uh -huh. they are. A lot, of, a lot of fucking. Weed is a gateway drug for some people. It can be. It can be. And alcohol, the, the statistics on alcohol and murder and alcohol and sexual assault yeah. are staggering. Yes. And pardon the pun, but they're sobering. They're like, what do, what do we, yeah, I know. Let's just, so, yeah. let's Look, just eat. That's a cup of coffee right there. That was a cup of coffee right there. But I mean, like, you know, there's all this horrible <laughs> stuff happening. And when you look at it, how much of it was fueled, potentially even encouraged, like the rage is yeah. encouraged by alcohol and like, mm -hmm. you know, it, that's what it does. It inhibits you. Yeah. Anyway, so your parents wanted to protect you from that. They put you in the school and then you were like, I want to be in showbiz. Let's slow this story down. When and why did you want to be in showbiz? I think I just, um, I don't know. It was just kind of like a, a way that I felt like I was moving. I don't know if there was ever like a moment. I think I liked Power Rangers when I was a kid. I yeah. just, I just think I liked. Something a little off about the Power Rangers because it's dubbed. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I didn't know that until later. Me so neither. They, yeah, that but there, it's compelling. It. You're kind of like, why is it so, like the Blue Ranger would act when he was, you know, Clearly him, yeah, yeah, meaning yeah. not dubbed. And then it would cut to the fight scenes, and you're like, I don't believe that guy moves like that. Yeah, I don't believe a lot of them. And then it's like Rita Repulsa. What's she doing? Rita Repulsa's on a whole other thing. Wait, I, who is Rita Repulsa? She's the villain. She's the one who is like the Rangers. Oh yeah, she yeah. was scared, and she was dubbed. She was obviously dubbed, dubbed which is yeah. like they didn't. They could have redone Rita Repulsa. That would have made it. <laughs> that would have made Rita me believe Repulsa. it. Rita Repulsa. It's. I remember, yeah. So you liked you liked Power Rangers. I liked Power Rangers. And were you a funny? I was funny in school. I always was just I was always trying to get people off track and everything like that. And then I just I don't know. I just uh, I think there was like a moment in high school where I was like I would always quote things, you know, classic Good memory for jokes, memory for stuff. I would quote things that I saw. I was always talking about comedy. And then I remember there was like a To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, we were studying To Kill a Mockingbird, and then we had a, um, we were going to do like a mock trial. We were going to like act out a version of it. But it was just like, the the teacher kind of gave the, uh, as a direction of like, like we're going to just kind of do a little bit of a presentation. And I showed up in like overalls and like too, way too much. <laughs> Wait, so you weren't the main guy. You didn't come in a white suit with no, a, with I, a watch I think, fob. No, I think I was being a lawyer, but in my head I was like, the lawyers wear overalls <laughs> back then. Everybody had overalls. Everybody had overalls. It just depended if you did both buckles up or not. If you know, one down one lets down. people know. Not only on trial. do I overall party, I one buckle <laughs> unbuckled party. Yeah. Like that's a guy who's making his own moon. Osh gosh. <laughs> I just osh. Osh gosh. I just osh. <laughs> I keep the gosh unbuckled. Yeah, the gosh, the gosh over my shoulder. <laughs> Wait, this, this is a weird tangent, but Mickey Mouse has suspender buttons. You know what I'm talking about? Like he has those two yellow buttons on his pants. They're up there here? Yeah, he's got two buttons on his pants, but there's no... So I just immediately jumped to this theory. He is wearing suspenders, but they're black. And they're they're blending in? They're blending into him. I'm, I'm realizing I forget what Mickey Mouse looks like right now. Three circles, we're 90% there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Reg, uh, you know, human body. Nose. All black. Mm-hmm. Red pants, two yellow buttons. What are those buttons for? Those are suspenders. He's wearing suspenders, but they're black. This is going to break the internet. This is, yeah, for <laughs> if the you longest. zoom in, you can see the tiniest bulge. <laughs> we thought they were nipples for all these years. And now. Oh, he just has low, low sagging low, yellow, yellow nipples. nipples. <laughs> Old, low, yellow nipple Mickey. Yeah. Oh, boy, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's so stupid. We're having fun, though. Uh, Are you Googling it? Okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah, does Mickey Mouse like, have nipples? Mickey Mouse suspender theory produces zero results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on racist.com, they say. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's pigeon English, which even as I say it, I'm like, there's no way I there's can no say good. that. That's Is no that good. pigeon English? Nope. Nobody ever said that lovingly. Yeah, yeah. Tenderly Aww. asking. I'm sorry, are you speaking pigeon, pigeon English? English? Pigeon. Okay, um, you Power Rangers, 
Mickey Mouse for no reason came up. Suspenders. Oh, Oshkosh, you showed up for the play and took it like really serious. It was, yeah, it was just like a class presentation. And then the teacher was kind of like, it was the first teacher who kind of told me everybody else had an emphasis on like, you got to go to university after after high school. We yeah. got to figure that out. And then, and you know, it was, a, it was a very university, get married, like that, that was the the path. And then she told me, she was like, you could, you know, you could maybe make a go of something like this. She told me, she's like, he's like, you could be maybe an actor. And I was like, oh, I didn't even really realize that was. Like he saw your razzle dazzle? Yeah. The, she was like, you know, there's something, she's like, you did something there. She was like, there's something that you just did there. And then she said that. And then she, I remember her telling you, she's what like, did you do? I don't like, remember. I object. I think I did an accent. <laughs> you did? I think I went a little bit. I say you take that <laughs> a step back. Yeah, I was foghorn in the yeah. middle of the class. I, yeah, I don't know what, I don't remember what it was anymore, but, and then I remember her telling me that she's like, you know, you don't have to go to university. Okay. And I was, I've never, Could other people see this teacher? Because this sounds like an angel. <laughs> this I sounds like somebody was like, Malik. Yeah, stand up comedy. It's like now that this was a hallucination you had. I, a lot of yeah, I have a lot of moments like that where it's like, is this is this just like a guidance? Yeah, it feels like kind of like being like led along. Yeah, like that. What, like what, what held along? What jumped to mind? I don't know. Just every like on all the moments like they feel like like um, quite like linear. Like from there, I started working at like I just like worked at Walmart like out of high school, and then I would just like look at dvds all day and just kind of like look at actors and just kind of how just think about it yeah and i, I just hyped yeah, myself yeah. up i remember i looked at, i was looking at the count of monte cristo or the movie yeah. and then i kind of uh at this time i was like wanting to be an actor and then i was like googling like theater companies in calgary because there was no we tried to do a play at the islamic school another teacher kind of i think started a drama class for me so that i could do it Oh my and god! And we did this play called the Paper Bag Bandit. And can we, were, we just pause and point out how atrocious the other children must have been? Oh my god! They, they were couldn't. like, Malik has a little talent. Let's get him in here. And then there's just like seven rubes. Oh man, they were. They, they, <laughs> nobody could keep a straight face. I was. I was. I was being like, guys, can we please be fucking <laughs> professional? Are you not fucking professional? I was yeah, yeah. screaming at people. Yeah. Amazing. So a teacher, another teacher another noticed teacher your talent. Who you came in, uh, a white lady. Sometimes we would have a white teacher and she'd come in and try to shake Did up. Did they the have whole. to be Muslim? No. Sometimes no. we had a lot of Muslim teachers, but sometimes we'd have a non Muslim teacher. And she came in and she was like the art teacher. And she, you know, and she was like, you know, like we could, she could see that I wanted to do it really bad. And then she started a, a drama class. And we were in the Whoa. middle of it and it was, it was like, it was like a romance. And then I remember we got about like halfway through like rehearsing it. And then the Islamic studies teacher came and shut it down. He said, we don't do this kind of thing here. So then it was over. Wait, so, why did he shut it down? Cause Just cause it's cause sort we of, don't do that. Yeah. We don't do, we don't do romance in with like these kids basically. And we weren't going to like, we weren't going to like make out yeah, in yeah, front yeah. of the. But theater is look, obviously I'm all for it, but I understand the guy being like, this is weird. This is weird. I understand I'm my not, parents. Yeah. I understand all of it. Now. It's like the part of me that understands you, not wanting you to drink and do drugs and go into show business. I can understand. We're, it's so normal. Uh -huh. But if you are trying to kind of like, I don't know, shelter people? Or what do you think the intent of a guy shutting down a theater program is? I don't know. I think everybody was just worried. I truly think everybody was very worried about me. Because they didn't know, because I just wouldn't <laughs> do anything that anybody asked me to do. I really was like, no. And then nobody had any frame of reference. People only had examples of what happens when this doesn't go well. Yeah, when you cousin, explode. It, when, it just deteriorates. And yeah. You drugs and you I had nuts. a cousin who went down a really bad path. And he was a very funny kid. And then he, but he, he got like lost in, in drugs and he's still, he's still there. You know, oh, he's no. still, he's still in that path. So like my so parents that saw was that. hanging over your head. Yeah. Yeah. They, they always were like, like when they would find something or like see what I was doing, they it was just like so scared that I was going to end up. This reminds me of like. Arnold Schwarzenegger so it's not obviously a completely different culture but mm -hmm. I watched that documentary and like he'd have those magazine like bodybuilding magazines and his dad was like what like what yeah what is this yeah and again I I was trying to relate to the dad like I yeah I obviously relate to Arnold it was his interest it was his passion but like 
things are weird. Like if you're not familiar with a bodybuilding magazine or your son being like straight on the China, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, like your poor dad. And then, and then this cousin, he was talented or he is talented. Yeah. He used to get up and entertain the whole family. So like, look, I don't know why I'm being an apologist for sort of like old, old school kind of philosophies or, or, or worldviews. World I, feel, I feel for it. But I, yeah. It's, I, it's, it's, it's scared. unfamiliar. It's scared. It's, it's trying to make a, make understanding in a world that's changing. A lot of yeah. people are not from here Yeah. or they're like, the world has changed so much since they've been alive. Yeah. They're that's trying right. to grasp that's onto right. something. That's right. But also like a performer, like when I explain stand up to people, I'm like, it's like free cocaine. It's like you do a set, mm -hmm. like your set at Largo the other night was so great. Mm -hmm. We're all just backstage and we, you are high. We're like high people. I have to imagine you were high. I was, I felt great. And then we we're talking afterwards. Like, yeah, yeah. And we talk like high people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like if great. you were There's bugging us, like bugging the room, you would be like, these people are probably on cocaine. Yeah. Even though, you know, Kumail and I were there and we've been doing this, this performance drug longer. So I feel like I can, you were very chill. I don't mean it that way. I just mean like we can kind of be like, kind of acting normal, but inside it's the 4th of July, you know, you're like yeah. lit up. I'm so standing up, I'm moving around. Yeah. I'm no, stretching. You, you, you fit in perfectly. I'm just saying like the correlation between a guy who gets up in front of people and this is really me being like really sort of rigid, I guess. But if you get up in front of people looking for laughs, that is looking for your value and looking for like a hit of something that you're lacking from outside, mm -hmm. right? So it's people, laughs, and then it's not that big of a jump to go to, well, alcohol is sort of like a laughing audience. Like I can fill that hole with this and, yeah. and look at how much drugs and alcohol is in this. So I, it's not crazy yeah. to say this guy isn't, and I would say this about me, this guy, I'm pointing to myself, is not drawing from his own wellspring. I'm looking for it from you right now. Uh -huh. I'm looking for it from the audience. Yeah. I'll look for it on stage. I've found some balance there, but seeing the the pattern from that kind of addiction to another kind of addiction, I could see why your parents would be less concerned if you weren't kind of like shopping around for a feeling. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. They just didn't know what to make of any of it. They yeah. didn't know what they they're just like, yeah, Hollywood is is these sick people. And yeah. they do drugs <laughs> and they and they do and, and and hey, and we're talking about that. And they're not wrong sometimes, you know? That is that happens. Well it also, you know, you're considerably younger than me, but the Hollywood that your parents saw was if you're a, a Muslim, you're the terrorist and yeah. you know, it was all painted pretty poorly. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, my, my and mom- And you're like, I want to get in bed with these people. And <laughs> it's like, I, oh I, no. I was like, I don't think I look, the, I don't look like a terrorist enough to even get that part. I mean, I'll play a white Which guy. Which is disappointing. You're ready to sell out and go for it <laughs> Nobody hard. will even let and me. And they're like, nah. I'm trying to do Baconator commercials. No. <laughs> they won't let me. Can you do old Jewish voice? <laughs> like, it doesn't do work, it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm just, I'm, I'm having an easy time understanding your parents, surprisingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, I mean, jumping ahead, now they're kind of, they don't know what to make of it still, but now they're like, um, they're like excited about it, but just don't know. They're just kind of just, just doing their general best. support. That's good. Yeah. Like my mom yesterday, I told her I was coming to do this and she was like, she was like making dua. She was like praying. She said, uh. I'll lay uh, not good uh, funny things to say. She said, God, please allow him to utter funny things. Oh my God. <laughs> Which is not like a prayer that exists. Like she's like, she's has, going off road. To, yeah. She's going off road, but that's beautiful. Yeah. That's great. I, I see my parents efforting to understand and appreciate. And, and that really warms my heart. Mm -hmm. I've said this before, but one of the closest times I ever felt to my parents was when they signed a release for HBO because I was writing characters based on them. Oh, yeah. And they were nervous. The legal department wanted them to sign a release, and they did. And my parents were like, they kept saying, as long as it's funny. They it's like, say whatever you want, as long as it's funny. Yeah, and they I was trusted like, you. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. This is really special for me. So, like, this, is, this conversation is helping me understand even how weird things are for, for them. Yeah, I, I, I feel for them. I, I think I stress them out a lot. Really? And I, yeah, I think with all this stuff, I think I was just kind of trying to like find something. Yeah. I think I, I think also going to the Islamic school when I was a kid, I also like, there was like, I don't know if like, 
I was explained to properly like what I should be feeling when I was praying. Oh, interesting. Tell me, what do you mean? Like there was always like a, like, am I praying right? Do you know what I mean? Like is the feeling, is what's supposed to be happening happening to me? I used to try, look, I'm just saying this to relate, not go off on a tangent. I used to pray for the gift of tongues, would speak in tongues, Mm -hmm. not really in my church, but I knew that's, that's in the Bible. It's an ax, you know, it's like, that's a thing. Uh-huh. You can be overcome with the spirit and you speak in a in a, a language we don't understand. Yeah. And I wanted that so bad just because I wanted proof that I was doing it correctly. Mm-hmm. And I'd pray in private. It, it never came. It never happened. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, mm-hmm. is this... Is this is what this I'm right? supposed to be feeling? Is this right? Like, I'm, I'm looking not, around kind of a little bit. But I didn't that. see it. Look, I didn't see it in a lot of the grownups. I didn't see them having like revelation or or even just peace this is what i meant is that i'm like we're all talking about this spiritual thing of like getting to this place but i don't think this is what we're like it doesn't feel like it's actually what we're after in this way yeah i was like okay if we're gonna be these spiritual people it didn't feel very spiritual it felt very rigid and i was like looking for like maybe a connection yeah there was a whole thing of like we'd be praying because we had prayer every day in school we would pray and then i remember the way that they explained prayer to us is like half of your half of your heart is in in love for Allah and reverence for Allah and then half of it is fear for Allah. And so it was just explained to me like that. So I would just kind of like be like sitting there and just be just thinking about that. And I'd be like, what is that? What is those two things multiply into? What feeling does that get? And I was like, yeah. I don't think, and I'll be trying not to like lose my focus on that. And I'm like, I don't think this is it. I just was like, yeah, I have a lot of feelings about what you just said. And, and it's hard to say them because I don't want to be disrespectful to a tradition. Not that every Muslim is the same, Yeah, but that... Uh, perspective on God is really hard for me to hear. Like, what do you mean? The f- the, the like, fear let's of it. be scared. And I think it was a lot of worry around me and bargaining. Well, yeah, uh, Kumail told me about an exercise that, or somebody had, somebody at some point in his life explained to him that like walking to heaven was like walking on a razor wire above yes. hell, and yes. like, and it's as hard to walk like a mile of razor wire, and you have to walk. Yeah, to God. And your faith keeps you. And your faith on keeps you balanced, but it's like any mistake. And you, I know. And, the, and, that, and that Christians rhetoric, have that too, by the yeah, way. That we have. Rhetoric scares the shit out of you. Um, sinners in the eyes of an angry God or in the hands of an angry God. Yeah. So Jonathan Edwards, I think is his name, says we're like spiders in God's hand and he's holding the spider above a fire and the spider keeps biting God's hand. So there, this is in every faith has some version of the fear. That's why it's hard for me to hear. It's not, it's not just what that might have done to you. Yeah. It's like what ideas like that did to me. Well, yeah, it feels like in even in like the text and then in the parents and then in the teachers is all the same thing. It's just like it's a way to get children, which is even just like humans, I'm like going to count as children in this, is just getting them to understand. Yeah. How do we get like humans to understand this like this thing that's not to understand? Right, right. Fire hot. Yeah. Ow. Right. That kind of thing. So right. that was, I felt like, 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 and I feel like that's what was going on with the school was like, I think at that time, maybe they've gotten there and there was a lot of good that came out of the school, but this is just kind of how yeah, I yeah, was yeah. taking it at the time was that I was I'm like, right there with you. They didn't know how to get hundreds of kids whose parents came from another country. And now they're like, their parents desperately want them to have a piece of the culture that they had when they were growing up. How do we get it into these kids that are seeing everything else the world opening up and you can do anything. How do we get them to be like, no, this is the thing. A little bit of fear helps just kind of keep Look, you there. Okay. I like this. This is compassion for that side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to, when I say sell, I mean, propagate a idea. It's very hard to do that without fear. And advertising is doing this all the time. I'm, I'm really just trying to broaden this concept. Yeah. Isn't like, maybe this is a stretch, but it's like a car commercial. There's a little bit of fear there. If you don't have the right car, how will people see you? Wouldn't you say that's like a, yeah. that's a pack mentality. You won't be revered or no one will mate with you, right? Yeah. By show, that, that's not the most obvious example, but with, with Christianity, I'll say, we're going to sell Christianity, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, first of all, I need to get you on the hook. So I'm going to say you were born a sinner. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. So we're off. We're, the need is there. Yes. If I'm going to sell you 
magic mind. I'm going to be like, do you have a hard time focusing? It's very similar. Perfectly. You don't have enough. Yeah. You're, you're, and by the way, I, obviously I love magic mind. You just drank it. I'm, yeah. But I'm saying all advertising is kind of like, what are you looking for? So Christianity is like, are you, you need redemption. And mm -hmm. here's proof. Here's a, a very old story about how you were born a sinner. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have it. You need to believe this and, and, and follow these precepts and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And then the final step is put a clock on it. This is for a limited time only, the McRib. It's basically the McRib, which Oof, I know you've never yeah. had, and neither have I. No. But, uh, <laughs> Christianity but is the McRib. Christianity is similar to the McRib in that the limited time is you'll die, and you could die any day. Yeah. Isn't that fucking nuts? Sometimes I think about this all the time. You, can, yeah. you go, this could be, this could be it. Yeah. Fucking crazy. So it goes, you never know when you're going to die. This is why I, I get so sad. It used to be angry, but now it's a little bit more sad when I see billboards, especially in certain parts of the country, that just say, like, if you die today, do you know where you would go? I'm like, that's just the purest line of fear. Yeah. And it's even coming from a place maybe uh, of well-meaning. Like, maybe they mean it. We got to get them to eat this McRib. <laughs> we got to get the most people to eat the McRib all at once. Right. We're, we're, we're trying to feed everybody. Yeah. And we have to force feed it to them. And okay, we're so, not sure if they know how to eat. And then you put aside true conversion. So that's what we're saying. When we're talking about joy and peace and patience, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. sure you've met a lot of spiritual people that you can just tell. Yeah. Like, oh, they're, they're died. Like D-Y-E-D. -E they, yeah. they, they got soaked in God, and now they are just, they're converted. They're new. They they're move born. through the world way easier. They did it. They don't have the fear. They don't have the... Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And everybody that meets God, in my opinion, meets a lover, not a tormentor. But yeah. these, these things, like, if you're over here and you were taught with fear, mm -hmm. and you're taught that if you die, uh, you could go to hell. So you're basically, now you're looking at it, and I remember this being explained to me when I was growing up Christian, it's like somebody has their foot stuck in the train track. You're not going to go up to them and be, and be like, you know, wait for God and look for God and everything. You're just going to get, get your fucking foot out of there. They're like, I don't need to. And you're like, you're going to get hit by a train. You just get that mentality. Does yeah, that make sense? That energy of uh, Panic. of you have to do something now. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got to sell these McRibs. Yeah, and I think that that permeates that, that feeling kind of... Uh, was in me. Yeah. I had that feeling. My parents had that feeling. I had it. I just recently heard something that made me um, kind of like, it just kind of changed my perception about that, which is like, don't let the ferociousness of modernity force you uh, to rush through things you should take your time with. Wow. Which is like, which is all of it. We should be taking our time and like, Stop doing things as a means to an end and just do do them. Yeah. yeah, there's a part of me that I don't know why I am always in a, like it feels like time is running out. I've always had that feeling. Can I add to that? Pending doom a little bit. Okay, so look at, okay. We, we now we all take our, our photos on our cameras and then we just have them. Yeah. So in the 80s, before you were born, <laughs> you'd take pictures and then you'd go to CVS and you'd drop them off. This is an errand. Yeah. Then you'd have to go back and wait in line and pick them up. So let's, let's just be conservative like, and say that with an hour, two mm -hmm. hours maybe. Yeah. So we're all saving two hours. So shouldn't we have, we have photos, we don't have to develop them. Where did those two hours go? Yeah. Why aren't I straight up kicking it in a hammock. If I was hammocking for two hours a week, yeah. I'd look younger. <laughs> you feel so much better. Yeah, it used to but take- But they're gone, they get replaced. It used to take you weeks to get anywhere, years to get anywhere. Yes, we should have so Oregon much time. Trail. We should have so much time. Yes, we should, and we should, but this is, this is where you see the lack of um, value. They, we don't put value on leisure time or quiet time, mm -hmm. which is what prayer, you know, one aspect of prayer is a quiet, centering a second, time. Relax. Yeah. And, you know, the Jewish faith, I think, has done a really good job with with the Sabbath. It's like, mm -hmm. take a whole day. And like, yeah. And we're all going to do it. That's pretty That's pretty dope. And I see a lot of benefit in that. Mm -hmm. And that's in Ramadan, too. You're just supposed to just, like, like let it all go for a month. Just whatever. Incredible. Yeah. Truly incredible. And that that's a cultural, that's a culture valuing what in the West we're not, we're not valuing. We're like, well, let's save the time just to fucking what? What are we doing? Yeah, we're like mortgaging the present for a future that we don't even know 
we're not even promised. We're mortgaging the present for a future we're not even promised is fucking, you're 27. That's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> Kate looks it up and she goes, no, that he stole that. Yeah. <laughs> W.C. Field said that. That's weird. Hmm. Of all of the people. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Into it. The, we're talking about a, an Arnold Palmer of fear and, and love and why we can kind of understand the desperation to get you indoctrinated into not only a faith, but a culture, right? I mean, yeah. it's not, it's a people, it's a place. Yeah. It's not just a philosophy. It, it's, it's your, you know, your, I don't, it sounds too severe to say your bloodline, but I can see why. People want you to be like them, like how they, like my parents and the people around me, like the teachers, they're, they're like, want, we want you to be like us so that we feel like we did what we were trying to do, right? which was try to carry a tradition on. So if you're doing something that we don't recognize, did we all fuck up? Right. Did everybody fuck up? Right. And I think that my parents had that feeling of like, we blew it because he's not like us. It's like the whole culture is trying to have, you know, we, uh, this is not why you should reproduce, but part of the reason why people reproduce is this like immortality. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I will be happier when I'm dying to know that my genes. Yes. And also, you know, you see this in the animal kingdom. They're doing it. There's an urge to keep you going. Yes. It's almost like the whole, so many faiths, um, not just Islam, but so many faiths are trying to have a baby <laughs> that yeah. will continue on. Otherwise, if you don't continue, and you tell me if you felt this, if you don't continue it on, I know a lot of my Jewish friends feel this way, you're like letting them you're letting them down, you know? You're letting them die. You're letting, you're them, letting them die. die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're going like, actually, I'm, I'm going to ride a hoverboard and hit a vape. <laughs> you know, and they're like, no! <laughs> right? No. Yeah. Pl no, please. <laughs> please bust inside. <laughs> bust inside! Oh, that's them. <laughs> I guess they so. Want, they want you to have the vape. Please. I guess so. But, but, yeah. the, but also don't. You're having Islam sex with a condom is, is the problem. Like you're not fully <laughs> committing. I was. Which, by the way, I was thinking about this on the way in because a friend of mine, uh, a Jewish friend of mine, I was using their sink and uh, whatever. I was worried that they were kosher. And then they were like, we're not kosher. And I was like, of course you're not kosher. Nobody's fucking kosher. But then like this same friend would be like, you must marry a Jew. Like, but I'm like, yeah. which is it? Uh -huh. We're not, look, this is every faith. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is Christianity as well. I have yeah. to marry a Christian. But like, are you doing the thing? No, we, we're picking the, the hits. Cable, yeah, we're picking cable. We're kind of picking the channels. Yeah. I'm just trying to be less rigid about it also just now. I'm just trying to see... I'm just trying to go with the feelings of it and like feel what makes me feel like I'm like walking in the light. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Like at this point now, it was just a lot of like being scared and feeling like I was doing something wrong. I, um, I kind of have the feeling now that I'm like, there's really in a larger sense, there's just nothing that could go wrong kind of thing. Like I just, I it, love that. Just that it is all fine. Do you know what I mean? No matter what happens, <sighs> even if my life doesn't go the way I want to, that's not, that's also, it's fine. I I just can't believe you're 27. It took me so long to <laughs> figure out. I had like a, I don't know how to, like a realization, let's just mm -hmm. call it that, where I was like, there's so much less to do than we think, which is God is greater. You know what I mean? Yeah, God it is, is greater going than like, your little, your little to-dos that you have to do around it doesn't your little even, bullshit you have to. That's what I'm, yes. I'm just so happy to hear you saying this just because I know the peace that it's given me. I'm working on a joke right now where I'm like, God loves me just the way I am. Isn't that annoying? I was like, it was so much more exciting. Uh -huh. It wasn't better. But when I thought God was like, I was like Jason Bourne and God was in the room with all the computers going like, he's jerking it, he's jerking <laughs> off. And like, send the angels, send the angels. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, send the shame, send the guilt, send, send the fear. Constant, like the amount of power mm -hmm. in that ego setup that you have over God. The reason I say ego, it's, it's an ego trip. I'm like, I'm, I'm pissing off God right now. Yeah. You know, it, like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's ridiculous to think that, uh, that it would, that, that you could affect it in that, in that way, I guess. Yeah. That you could bite God's hand. Like you're a spider and you're like, I'm going to bite God's hand. He's so pissed Yeah, that I just said pissed. Yes. And I'm like, the thing that did it 
is over there. It did it just to go like, like having an ant farm and being like this fucking ant, you know, or whatever. <laughs> if that's your view of God is like an observer. Mm -hmm. What a, what a crazy, what yeah. a crazy game for, for God to play. Yeah. To me, it's just like, it's that, that's, that's a tough thing to reckon with the free will of it all. Yeah. You know, and how much is like written and how much is like what we get to, to do here. Like, right. I don't know. Like that's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm still trying to figure out how much of it is like, um, in your brain. Yeah, and how much of it is a game, and how much of it is just like to take seriously, and how oh, much to okay. Look at look at AI, right? And we go, it's just a program. Uh -huh. We go, it's just, it's just a program. You give it these choices. It has this impetus. It has this history. It has, and it will choose this over that because it knows it's run that test. Aren't we just going around running tests and going like when I can't connect with my parents? A, a phrase that that I I just got reminded of it. Something that I said. Um that gives me a lot of pieces. If I was them, I'd be them. And I've said this a million times, but yeah. if I was your dad or, or pick anybody, it's yeah. hard because everybody goes, well, we'll pick Hitler. I'm like, okay, let, fucking, can you yeah. calm down just for a second? Yeah, yeah, But if I was a friend that I'm having a, 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 an argument with and I don't agree with them, of course, it's like the most obvious thing in the world, but it's the most profound thing in the world. If you had their brain, yeah. their past, their physiology, their the, everything, their psychology, you'd be them. You just have yours. It's like you just have a different operating system. You have different experiences. You had different parents. You uh -huh. had a different place. But that just made you you. But don't you see how arbitrary both... Like when you're driving on the highway and you see a, a, a sticker on a car that you disagree with, uh -huh. I used to be like, fucking it. Now I go, if I was them, I'd be them. I can't tell you the peace that this gives me. Mm -hmm. If you and I grew up in blah, 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 We'd be would have different feelings about this, this, or this just because of our environment. Yeah. So there's a certain and and then what happens when someone from it's like you going into show business. What happens when somebody from I don't want to put down any area, but let's just say from the deep south moves to New York City? Do they become more liberal? Often. Yeah. Often. Not yeah, yeah. I'm not saying a full wash, but once you start knowing a lot more different groups and and if a person from manhattan moves to that part do they become more this yes it's like we're all we're, so malleable we're that's all just what I'm like saying. membrane we're we programmed become, yes yeah, exactly yeah. we're so we're uh, so easily permeable. affected yes we're so easily affected and we're back to the mcrib this is why advertising yeah. works and we're like i don't do that sort of stuff fuck you dude as soon as everyone's watching ted lasso you just watch ted lasso you fuck that's yeah. free will and there's your free you. will and it makes you happy like they <laughs> yeah. wanted you to. Yeah, that's right feel. and you go yeah. no i just like good things eat shit they, you couldn't stand being in the ninth elevator and you didn't know about an optimistic soccer coach like that's it, you yeah, yeah, yeah you're not even there yeah. you're an ai <laughs> you're just a blank slate and the world can affect you in a million different ways but that's right but you are just this thing and you like that's i feel like that's what it is i'm trying to get to is i'm trying to like remove as much as i can to just see what is the thing back to the fasting what is the get thing to the, yeah i mean the, like i quit nicotine i mean i'm trying to quit everything and just try to see what it is yeah and like see what affects me the most and like what because i could just feel myself getting pulled around all the time and that is to me, spirituality uh, is the interest in that baseline. Like what is, what is the nature of pure being? The hum. Yeah. The hum. The hum. What are you if you let all of it go? Because what, uh, what are you that isn't, you know, going away, you know, your body, we could put your brain in a jar, you know what I mean? It's like, or your identity, your name, all of these You things. can completely just fall away and then it would, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know, everything would kind of be the same. I, I, right. I don't know. Well, what would be the same? So like it's put now it's a post-apocalyptic future and you and I are like cavemen, we're shitting everywhere, we're constantly playing with ourselves. Yeah. And and we like I am a non-murderer. Well, now you put me in a situation where there's a biker gang that's trying to eat my legs. I, you know, I just murdered nine guys. Uh -huh. And there's no legal <laughs> because I had to. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like I think this is why we're interested in pushing. But when you see how transient it is, I understand why spirit is going like. What do you and every person that's ever lived and everything that's ever lived have in common? 
and we could call that soul or whatever you want to say. Yeah, but what like, is that? What is it? So I think it's interesting that you're trying to kind of have a yard sale of your. Oh, how do you mean of like, your la- of your labels? Like you got rid of your nicotine, you got rid of. Yeah, I mean, and it's all kind of like free flowing. I mean, like I go in and out of a lot of different things. I like I like I like try certain things. I'll yeah. like I'll try a thing to like bring me towards one direction a little bit more. Yeah. You know, to try to have an experience to like oh, I just sort of. I'll sort of go with it. I mean, like I had a, a like a mushroom trip recently that I was like kind of trying to like go for that type of like just to sort of reset a little bit. I kind of went for it, and it was that it was, was your intention. That was my intention was to just like to get back to the bottom line. Yeah. What's the bottom line here? All right. this, there's all this noise. What's the bottom line? Which, by the way, is why Adam and Eve are naked. You know what I mean? It's like it's not. <laughs> What's the it's what's the bottom line? To be line? sexy, it's like can we strip away as much as we can? And what's uh-huh. a metaphor to help us understand that naked humanity, pure, you know, and one with don't God. Don't need anything. Don't need it. Yeah, exactly. You have everything. So tell me about this trip. The trip was, um, it was a lot of just laying down and just it was just kind of um, just feel just feeling the simplicity and uh-huh. feeling but beyond myself that everything is okay, fine. So that it's fine to relax about it. I got to like kind of ask it questions for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little Q&A? A little Q&A. It was a little bit of like, it was just a, a place or a, or, a, or a feeling or a, a, a thing was just, I was sort of engulfed in it, whatever that thing is. And yeah. I just sort of was in there and I was like, it felt so alien yeah. Um, but also like, like I knew it as well. And then do you I kinda, just mean foreign or do you mean like extraterrestrial? <laughs> extraterrestrial. It did. It felt extraterrestrial. So I asked it, I was like, are you like me? Like, are we the same? Am I like you? Am I, am I a part of you? And it, it said, you were, you are in, in me and everything is in me. Like I'm, I'm part yeah. of all of it. And then I was like, okay. And then I, um, that's it. And then I took that. We just turned the cameras up. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. But the experience, mm-hmm. so mystical, whatever, mystical Islam, mystical, whatever, is experiential. It's just a fancy word for experiential. That's what I'm trying to so get at. So when you experience, dude, I've, I've had it too, where you experience like, uh, I want to get back to that. Yeah. But the, the thing that you made me think of was like, I was like, Almost every time I have like a, like it could be a drug induced or any sort of spiritual experience, I'm always like, I have to tell my mom about this. Yeah. And the last time I had that, I was having a really, it was on ketamine. I was having a very, very profound, it's all, it's all just me. And I don't mean Pete. I mean that alien thing. It's all just this one thing. Yeah. And I was like, I got to tell. So then Pete kind of showed up in the experience. It was like, we got to tell mom about this because I love my mom. Yeah. And she introduced me to spirituality. And I'm always, peace. I want her to have it. And then it was like, and this is going to sound weird, but it was like, you're doing it for your mom. Like your mom is in this. You are. Like, you her. are your mom. Well, kind this of. is like, kind of the trip I got caught up in yeah. when with it. It was I was with a friend of mine who was raised in a very similar in certain circumstances of just being a human. We have similar like his dad is from Lebanon, like my dad is from Lebanon, and they immigrated here and they had kids young and and me and my friend were the same age we did this thing together and we kind of got caught up in this thing of like our dads never got to do this they and never do, yeah. they never got to like experience they wanted to probably know themselves a little bit more but they ran out of time yeah and they kept and this is their way of living on like we were talking about earlier of like like wanting your kids to be like you so that you can live forever they wanted like us is just like us experiencing whatever it is getting deeper in ourselves is like is is doing it for our dads that's it is we are helping them already that's the whole thing yeah. so i want to do this bit about like i have this feeling i don't really believe this but i'm like i have this feeling that when i die the whole thing ends and the punchline <laughs> is like a dream like mm-hmm. when i wake up from a dream everybody goes with me yeah. it's over yeah, yeah yeah like i woke up dreams over uh-huh. and i do believe that in like a spiritual sense sort of like that's really what the end of the world is mm-hmm. it's not hinging on me it's just like when this thing is done pretending to be separate the whole thing will kind of lovingly vanish. when you pretend when you're done pretending to be separate when i mean the big the alien thing you were talking to when yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. i'm done pretending to be all know, of you 
yeah, Malik. I'm not going to be Malik. I'm not yeah. going to be Pete. I'm just, okay, poof, uh, the dream's over. The whole thing ends. That's mm-hmm. the end of the world. That's the end times. It's yes. not f- buildings on fire and demons flying in the <laughs> yeah, sky. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what Hollywood did with it. It's actually uh, a, an awakening, a realization. So, but I'm not going to say that in the joke. In the joke, uh-huh. I just go, you know, like a dream. I think when I end, like, I just can't picture you eating a sandwich and I'm dead. Like, I just can't. <laughs> Like you're just walking around going like, remember Pete? Like I can't. And then this is the punchline. I go, I haven't tried it yet. I go, and isn't it frustrating? You'll never be able to tell me I was wrong. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Like I'm going to die thinking that was true and you'll never be able to tell me I was wrong. And because you think it, that it is kind of true. It is true for me. I, but going back to how I started, I don't really believe that. I do think there's something about the oneness that you just brought to mind is you are having those experiencing experiences for, with, and as your dad. I, I, I believe that literally. I really am feeling that lately. Right. Is that I'm kind of playing out, um, his like unfinished business a little bit. As we all are. As yeah, we're, and we're, we're all trying to from, carry the ball from the dawn of time. Exactly. That's, that's exactly right. The we're whole, it all out. there's only one ball in one field and we're just trying to get it in the end zone and everybody just keeps kind of pushing it forward we keep having these lives and i think we're trying to work out the noise of yeah of the one soul so that we can just then all merge hopefully agree at some point and it's all conspiring even the fact that we don't have to go to the cvs to develop our film anymore what do we do with those two hours it 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 might be you took mushrooms you know what i'm saying like yeah i'm saying it's all it it it's flattens all, and goes into everything. Yes. Yeah, it all goes in. But the whole thing is booby trapped and rigged, even technology advancing. So my father, when I go like, why doesn't my father go like, who am I or whatever? Yeah. Well, my father was probably like, I picture my dad's childhood like Dick Tracy. You know, he's wearing like a newsy hat and yeah. he's wearing suspenders like Mickey Mouse. And he, and, he, and he's having to get in fist fights with yeah. everybody to, for like a tuna sandwich that he ate that gave him the protein to make the sperm that made me. So he had like a rougher time. I'm 44 and I'm finally appreciating that my, my both of my parents, the hierarchy of needs, they had so many more uh, impending threats to just their basic day. Yeah. That of course they weren't going around and, and of course they looked down on the hippies that were smoking a J and listening to a Ram Dass lecture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, must be nice. I'm over here fighting a pigeon. I gotta survive. Pigeon. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. And, and that was probably, I'm assuming it sounds like a little bit more like your dad and your friend's dad. Yeah. They, yeah, they had to survive. They had to be more of like, the, they had to have more of the animalistic quality of just like, of, yeah. of what, and 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 now, like, because I don't have that, I have a little bit more of like the hours in the day that weren't spent fighting a tiger are now spent being uh, worried about something. Yeah, whatever. It, well, whatever a, it is, there's a dread side to that as well. As we were programmed to run from tigers, and there might have even been an equanimity to my father's more like scrappy. There was I'm just, sure they probably like, I'm sure there was a little bit more peace than I think that they had, even, even yeah. within the fear, the fear probably like, uh, like melded into the whole, all of him easier than it, it does with me because right. I I'm seeing all well, this other stuff. You're worried about a comment on a, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not, it's looser. It's not natural. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unnatural. Yeah. I, I remember Richard Roy wrote about, he's a Franciscan. He, he talked about like, shepherds. He was like, I think the reason why we see shepherds in holy literature, the Bible specifically, is that like, yeah, quiet people in those times that had the time to like stand around their fucking sheep or grazing. Yeah. Those are people that go like, wait a minute, what, what am I? You know what I mean? Like, what? You're looking at the sky, you're looking at sheep, you're in a field, there's nothing to do for six hours yeah. and then you're gonna bring them back. You have six hours to essentially pray. And I don't mean a list, a laundry list of demands. I mean to get quiet and like you're doing, strip it down and try and talk to that alien. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, try and talk to it. But it wasn't an alien, I guess. It right. was just- uh, well, I think it was you. I think it was me. Which and, I think, and it was kind of, it was, it was the me in the way that I'm everything. The big me. The big me. This is what I'm saying. The big me that when the big me is done, that's the end of the world. Yes, Pete, that's what you're saying about like saying. when yeah, if I if I'm if I'm everything, then there's nothing when it's over, yeah. kind of thing. So when you say it all depends on me, this is where you kind of have to like split. When you were talking about the 50-50 heart, it's like 
I, I do think there's another, this is going to be hard to explain, but we're like, <laughs> we're in, we've gone we're in it. Yeah. Yeah. People are watching this, this is on one that YouTube, you can't like, go I ate an edible and you I'm can't. I, clicked, I clicked the wrong link. <laughs> this is not a chill. <laughs> this is not a chill conversation. <laughs> but it is going back to what you say. I mean, I understand what you mean. Going back to what you said, when you say my life might not work out, yeah. right? Malik's life might not go gangbusters. Mm -hmm. I think you're in the 1% of spirituality, meaning understandably, a lot of people go, I believe in God because he protects me like the mafia. I pay out to him. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> what do you need? You need, you need some commandments? Yeah. You want an 11th commandment? I'll, I'll get you another Kick tablet. Kick up five prayers and we'll see what we <laughs> Kick up five prayers and I'll protect you. Yeah. I'll keep you healthy. I'll keep your loved ones healthy. And when do we lose our faith? When things go goofy, when mm -hmm. they go sideways, which by the way, speaking of Christianity, I'm like, you realize the spokesperson of this faith was murdered, brutally mm. murdered. Yeah. And we've turned it into like, if you roll with Jesus, nothing will happen for you. And you pray to a bleeding, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, a man who's bleeding out, who's, who's uh, uh, joining you uh -huh. in the suffering of the world and you're yeah. saying, please help me not suffer, is, is pretty funny. Yeah, Meaning it's, his it's whole, comical. His whole way of relating to all of us is that he's like, he's like, I am. Yeah, I'm I you. Can, I can suffer. Yeah, and I'm suffering with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when I say you're doing that with through it or whatever I said. I think when we're suffering, God is suffering as us, with us. You know what I mean? It's not like God is watching you suffer. You are, in a sense, God suffering. You're playing it out. You're playing it out. Yeah. You're, you're playing the part in the play because the whole thing is figuring something out. Yeah, and I mean, it's. I've heard people say that we are we are God experiencing itself. And I'm sure some, some people think that's kind of a blasphemous way to think of the, of it. Right. Um, but it does feel like it is in, in some ways that we are just kind of like, I don't know, we're just letting the tape unravel yeah. and working out this big thing so that we can be done with it. Right. I don't know. I don't know what, what to I, what end. You know, what satisfies me? Cause I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I don't, Pete is not God. Yes. I'm with you. It helps me to say I'm a child of God. Meaning you can say things that will contradict that and be like, there's no line separating my essence from God, but there is, That's it helps it, my, yeah. it helps me and keeps me humble to say like, I'm not the overseer, you know, I'm not yeah. the all in all, I'm not the ground of being. I am the ground of being, but I'm also not, you, you know what I mean? Like, I let, you mean. Let's, you can, let's put a little distance. There's and say, a little bit of distance. Every once in a while you can like feel, get a little closer to it and then like see through that eye a little bit and then yeah. you're like, okay, but I'm still, yeah, I'm still this, like this matter, you know? And as long as we're believing we're separate, then we're not fully cooked. You know what I mean? And, that, yeah. and that's okay. And this moment was like when I was talking to it felt yeah. very much like I was a child. It very much. Cause that's, then, that's, that's helpful to me. I was like, am I like you? I felt like a little, like a baby. I was like, am I like, like I was like trying am to like you? figure out, like, you know, when a baby yeah. looks at its hand and it's like, what the? Yeah. Like, that's how I kind of yeah. felt about it. And you see your dad's hand and you're like, oh. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I asked it, the next question was, uh, do you love me? Just to know. I just wanted yeah. to know. And he was like. Sorry, we got to go to the mid rolls. <laughs> uh, the perfect jeans. These. these are the perfect jeans. <laughs> Look how stretchy they are. Look at that. Something I think is funny is we talk about the secret to success. People are always like, what's the secret to success? And we know. We know the answer. We know meditation helps. We know fitness helps. We know sleep helps. We know breath work helps. But we sort of need a little nudge to get these things actually folded in and integrate it into our life. So I'm so happy for this new Pete's Pick, which is the app Open, which is actually here to guide you and to help you set yourself up for success with the things we already know we should be doing, but making it streamlined and easy and easy to make it a part of your daily routine. Starting your day with Open, ending your day with Open. What does that mean exactly? Well, you do the breath work in the morning. It makes me feel focused more than coffee. It's incredible. Then you can pop over to their fitness to build strength and mobility and get this this is the coolest one i've been using the meditation part before bed and i'm asleep in under 10 minutes that alone if this was just a sleep app 
it would be enough that gets you asleep in 10 minutes but it does so much more than that it helps you and motivates you towards your fitness goals helps you and motivates you towards your meditation goals it is basically mindfulness digitized health fitness breath sleep all in one place my only regret is not starting using open sooner this app will change your life and if you want to get on my daily routine you can get 30 days free of open by visiting with open.com slash weird again that's 30 days free by visiting with open.com slash weird oh and if you're in la make sure to check out their new studio to practice with open in person which of course is super super cool we talk a lot about mindfulness on this on this pod we talk a lot about breath work on this pod we talk a lot about meditation on this pod and of course we're talking about sleep and improving our life and getting moving open is the all-in-one place to implement these things into your life support this show support your own well-being go to withopen.com slash weird you can get 30 days free so cool check it out all right back to malik Okay, you said, "Do you love me?" Do you love me? And um, the the energy was a little bit of like, "Come on, that's that's the divine voice come to on, me." Come on, man. Yeah, come on, come on. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the question, it was like, it was like, of like a like a kid who's tired after a long day of play of just being on the earth of just like running around. I'm like, am I okay? And then yeah. it was just like a hand, and it was like, "You're fine." Don't that's worry it. About it. The, the, the parent-child thing, again, Richard Rohr, I quote this all the time, but he's like, our efforting to know and understand God is sort of darling to God. That's it, how it felt. You know what I mean? It's not... It's like, you poor thing. Yeah. So it's wrapped a, up in the world. Well, it's like asking in the ocean, would you, would you even get me wet? And it's like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> wetness. I'm wetness. You're soaked. Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking you're about? You're soaked. You're you're actually sugar, and you got dissolved into it. And yeah. you're going like, but is it? And I get it. Look, keep, even me. Yes. Yeah. Take away my coffee and my whatever my needs are. Can I get narrow vision and go like we're just a chicken bone in the gutter? For sure. So I understand asking. Yeah. And I don't think it ever tires of of saying like, yeah. It's okay. You it's always okay. have to ask. Yeah. yeah. You're, we're always asking. We're asking all the time with everything we do, I think, a little bit. I agree. I completely agree. So and you said, do you love me? And it goes, come on. <laughs> man, what are you doing? Come on. That's what you guys are Come on. What kind of fucking question is that? What kind of, you, you want me to protect you? Yeah. Can I tell you one just because so you, you might enjoy it? Yeah. James Finley wrote, I believe in a God who protects me from nothing but sustains me in everything. Isn't that great? Protects me from nothing and sustains me in everything. Well, think about the, like, I, I always go to my divorce. Yeah. I was not protected from that. And that was a big blow to my faith. I, yeah. I married the first girl I had sex with. I was like, I'm doing everything right. She has an affair. She runs away. She runs away. Because I'm I'm the place and she yeah. runs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from her she perspective, she's yeah. like, I got the hell out of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So depends on who the narrator is. Yes. But in my 28-year-old mind, I was like, oh, she ran away. Right? Um, but in that pain, I, there was a sustaining presence, even when I was like at my lowest and really just dark, there was still something when you looked for the bare naked Adam and Eve ness being core, it was still there. It was yeah. still there. So what I'm saying, what I love about that is you're saying even if, if Malik's life doesn't go perfectly, that doesn't change ultimate reality. That's very mushroom to me yeah to go like the reality of the ground of being is not contingent on my mood or even my life totally rocking yeah that's that's ego that's ego that's ego to get and to then you think go that it is yeah god bit. help me find a parking spot and then he doesn't and you're like well this god's not paying god's out. having an off day i'm gonna look up zeus i'm gonna learn some greek prayers and yeah. see if he does because <laughs> i <was> sleeping <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah let's mix it up <laughs> who's it's like uh I, I give to a charity called um, GiveWell, GiveWell.org, and yeah. they they find the charities that are underserved because uh -huh. there are sexy charities yeah. that get like all the attention. They get the and they're like money. Yeah, but nobody wants to help these people that like really need it. So you give it to them, and they have an algorithm that that funnels it. Like GiveWell.org, it's great. Mm -hmm. 
Similarly, can we find the gods that are not getting bothered as much? Everyone's going to J <laughs> JC. You know what I mean? Allah's huge. Can we find Hermes? Is anyone bugging Hermes these he's days? He's bored, dude. He's, he's out, yeah. He's, like, he's fast. Yeah, he's <laughs> flicking a lightning bolt like a like a nickel. He's just sitting uh, there. Uh, and you go, Hermes, can you find? And he's like, yes, yes, Whoa. yes. <laughs> Did he just eat it? Yeah, he ate the lightning bolt and he's, he's charged up. He's ready to go. You got to find the gods that have the time. Yeah. Yeah, don't be the hundred millionth caller. Be the first caller to WHME, Hermes. Yeah, don't be so rock. rigid. <laughs> don't be so rigid. It's not all, it's not all just, it's not all uh, Allah and, and Jesus. Yeah. And it's all whatever. You have the Get it how you, can. you have the chutzpah to go to Yahweh. Get yeah, the fuck you gotta have chutzpah. Here. You gotta have iman. You gotta have faith. <laughs> it's all. It's what all. Was the it. middle word? Iman. What's iman mean? Faith in oh, Arabic. Okay. You know, you it's go. all just the different versions of it. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, we, we've met our riff quota. We can still call ourselves a comedy podcast. Yeah. Back to everything being one. No, you. So, what else did you say to the to the alien? Um, I didn't. I, I, I kind of left it at that. I kind of opened my eyes and I, I mean, like, what else is there? I, yeah, there was nothing left to ask it. Yeah. He said, more, he was, <laughs> I was like, do you love me? He said, any more stupid fucking questions? Any <laughs> this fucking kid. He said, you love me. And then you no, go. I didn't, I didn't ask anything else. I kind of got up and then just sat up and was like, were you alone? No, I was with my friend. Oh, okay. I was with my friend and, um, and it was beautiful. And then, you know, and then I went on to like go and try to like, implement it but uh it was so fleeting and yeah. it and it uh it was really sad to like see it go and to see the and to and know time, yeah. to know that it was that simple and to know that i knew how simple everything was yeah. and then to and then to still get caught up in the world like to get upset at my dad it's not for the faint of heart this yeah. finding these big things because then you have to face the humbling that you like I tasted it. I am my mother. I am my father. It's all this thing. And then you're like, dad, you know, like, it's exactly <laughs> what happened. I went back home and then my dad, I was just a little, I had a little, not enough sleep. And then my dad was like trying to, he was trying to like have a good time with me. He was trying to joke with me. And yeah. I was like, I can't. Yeah. I was like, I can't. And I was like, yeah. what the, you yeah. just, you always can. I just had this experience of that. I always can. And it was just kind of like, uh, showed me that it's like, it's never, you never just get there and yeah. you snap and then you're there. Well, it's that, always work and it's always, you're, you're, you never, um, you never arrive. You're always going, I think. Right. I think that's true. And I think, you know, the Eckhart Tolle's of the world seem to say, you're going to get angry. You're going to have these feelings, right? Yeah. So, um, Pem, Ped, Pedman Trojan says, um, you're the sky. That mm -hmm. was your experience. Yes. The rest is just weather, right? Isn't yeah, that beautiful? Yeah. So I think the key is... Yeah, that's headspace stuff. It is. Yeah. You know, Not a sponsor, please believe yeah. that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but like when you realize fully you're dyed in the wool, you know you're the sky, I think the weather keeps coming. You just don't... Um, you don't identify with it, I think is the way that they might say it. Yeah. It's like the frustration comes and you go like, oh, there's frustration and Look you allow it. Mm -hmm. You know, like rain, recognize, allow, recognize, allow, investigate, nurture. I think I'm getting that mm. right. So when I have those feelings and Val, this is where my wife, my wife Val is such a good counterbalance. I love getting heady and being like, it's all one. It's, we know this, like we're yeah. being kind of masculine in this. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. we know this, we should know. Yeah. And she's so such a perfect harmony to this that just goes like, yeah, and, and Malik's going to get upset at his dad or not want to play around or whatever it is, and that's okay. And that being part of it rather than me being in opposition exactly. to the information of the oneness. Buddy. That, I, that, I'm like some, that, that I'm somehow pushing away the oneness of the world by being upset with my dad. And it's like, no, that's actually the, the greatest example of it. Yeah. Is that even in that... And talking about everything co-conspiring to move things forward, I'm never more... So Leonard Cohen says the cracks are how the light gets through, right? So you, have, you, you bump up against your dad and you crack. But then like these things seep in more deeply because of the woundings, right? Yeah. So 
I just, just this past weekend, I had like a little dust up with my dad and I just noticed like when I was like scared and angry and every, all these things, I was just so much more porous to everyone, to everyone mm. else's needs. Yeah. Like when everything's rocking, this is why like as much as I love uh, Andrew Huberman and, and Tony Robbins and these people that are just like, get up in the morning and go like this. Go like this for 35 seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're just all the air in the world yeah. and you're fine. And they're just figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Elbow, elbow a mirror nine times and this is going to trick your brain into thinking that you are the fastest man. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah. And it's incomplete. Unless we're sharing our brokenness, it's just not the full thing. It, it's like... And I'm sure those people can and do. But mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Like Pete, who's just going around, killing it, fucking biking around an apple orchard, isn't really that much use to you. I wouldn't do stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't do this podcast. Like if I was just like fucking figured it out, that brokenness I experienced with my father is in, and we we sewed it up, but like, is informing and helping this conversation yeah. because I need you to see me and, and you need me to see you because of these vulnerabilities. Yeah. So it's not a flaw in the system. It's just so hard to no, remember No, the cracks this. make it so that you want to connect. Yeah, wanna, they draw us together. You want to seal the cracks with everybody else. That's right. With the, with the rest of the world. You have like who you are and then there's, you can fill it in. I think that's with stand-up what I'm trying to, I guess with just what I'm, I'm I think I just want to connect. And I think that's like stand-up is it. like a, a way that I like connecting. Yeah. And I think that's maybe what I was going for when I was younger. It was like just a connection in some way. Absolutely. I was like, I don't know how um I don't know how to get it through this thing. I don't know how to pray. Yeah. So I'm like, let me just try and find it. And then now I'm trying to find it. Yeah. How to connect. Well, remember with everything. when we were in Vancouver, you murdered in front of a thousand people. Uh, Those people became like one with the ideas in the room. And and they get yeah. the piece of that. The, oh, let me take a break from my own mind and we'll all have this one mind that's the you know the responsibility and the fun of being a comedian yeah like let's all think this yeah it's very <laughs> it's very powerful same with a movie yeah it's let's very... all have the same dream instead of all these lonely isolated private dreams we have at night let's yeah. all have the same dream together and talk about it let's try as hard as we can to be one for a second i think that's all of it yeah i i'm not a huge fan of live music but i understand it's like let's all hear hear this song now. Yeah. I'm like, my brain goes like, just listen to the record. But like when you're, when you're in a When you're in a room with all those people and you, totally. and you see them all listening to it and it's a song you know and you realize that everybody has their own feelings about this song. Yeah. And that everybody's had happy and sad moments to the song. You're yeah. like, yeah, there's like a, it's not the same as what we do, but you're it's You're all like, carrying it together. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same as what we do, but. It's not the same as um, as how maybe we experience it, but it's all it's just it's a it's like a conduit for us to have an experience through. We have these we do these things that are just a way for people to like pour themselves into for a second. Totally, yeah, and vanish a little bit, yeah, and also stand out. It's it's a it's a paradox. I'm looking at your shirt. I remember you worked with special needs kids. I'm wondering if that had any effect on you and your perspective of the world. I think so. I think maybe yeah. I think I just I think I just wanted to to help. Yeah. I wanted to just get, I just wanted to be in something a lot, a lot of the time. Like belong and, and participate and contribute? Yeah. I think I just kept, How do they come I kept looking for that. This was um, my friend, John, who I met doing theater, who was like my, one of my favorite people ever, who like I met through that and we just became like best friends. And he has um, a brother with Down syndrome. And uh, I remember, I remember growing up and watching a, a movie that was about a, a special needs boy with Shia LaBeouf, I remember. And it was, it, nobody knows about this movie, but I remember seeing him doing this and feeling just so, so bad for him in the movie. Like he was getting bullied. And I just was like, I think yeah. as a child, I was like, this is not, I was like, there's gotta be something we could do about this. I'm with you. There's a certain. It broke my heart as yeah. a kid. that Because I just didn't get it. Like I didn't know anybody special needs when I was a kid, but I just, so this was like my introduction to that there was people who were experiencing things differently and then there were kids like being like mean to them and it like broke my heart and then I just kind of I think I like looked in I like looked in the newspaper to try to see I'm like is there a way to like you how do you get involved a movie and you looked in the newspaper yeah to get involved yeah I'm, I'm yeah I'm like the your last parents should the be last so proud. In the 90s if your parents if your parents listen to this two things one what a gorgeous heart you have and two oh, you. if you were a stock 
like if there was a comedy stock like exchange, uh-huh. I'd invest so much money in you because <laughs> I have <laughs> no doubt you're uh, going to do fantastic. So oh, thank what are you. your parents' names? Uh, Ilham. Ilham. And Muhammad. And Muhammad. Yeah, Ilham uh, and Muhammad. Do not worry. <laughs> Your son is going to be just yeah, fine. Yeah, they'll never listen to this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, in that case, eat shit. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, ah! They're the best. I didn't know if they if they were those types of folks. Um, They, uh, yeah. And I remember, yeah, I just, I met uh, John and I just kind of, we, I would just hang out with him and his family at his house and I would hang out with his brother and then he just, uh. His he, Down syndrome. Uh, his, brother, yeah. his brother with Down syndrome. And, uh, yeah, you shouldn't say Down syndrome brother, but the brother with Down syndrome. I think you can, syndrome. honestly. Okay. And also, and here's the thing. This is what I learned through this family is that they're saying all of it. There's n- they're not like, there's no thing that don't say that. They're, right. The people who have those rules don't aren't typically the parent. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, one of Leela's best friends has Down syndrome and we're yeah. very close with the family and she's like, she's like family to us, all of yeah. them. And uh, that was the first thing we noticed. The uptightness isn't coming from them per se. I'm sure there's the uncomfortableness people. of people who don't, who don't have those people in their lives. I yeah. think who don't yeah. know how to talk about it. Right. And right. yeah. So yeah. And then he, he just was like, maybe you could, he worked at this place and then he was like, we should come. And what did you do? It. It's really, it was, my job was called social experience guide and I was 19. So I didn't have any social experience, but they were like, <laughs> you can maybe just try and, just kind of just be a be good, chill. Just be a chill guy around yeah. these guys. Play play games with them. Go swimming with them. Yeah. Go to the movies. It was just that. Like that was that was my job. Wow. And it was uh it was the best. There was a thing called movie project. That was very fun. A what lot of these that? guys they just like make movies. My friend Christian um started a thing called uh, movie project, and then like they they just make the their their films and they learn how to make movies and Whoa, there's just so a lot of programs acting, within, editing and, and coming up yeah, with stories. stop motion all no kinds way. of things yeah so cool. it's a it's a beautiful a beautiful place wow yeah and how long did you do it i worked there on and off for like uh 3 years i think hmm. yeah what did, what did you and, and it's okay if you don't have an answer this isn't super soul sunday but like if you learn something or another way to look at that is what do people get wrong about people with special needs? What did you figure out? Oh, the thing that I figured out, and I'll and I'll say, and this is, and and I got fired for this. At first. <laughs> 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 but I'm dying to know what you're about to say. Um, I figured something out, and this is actually why I was fired. But history made me a victor in this because I was fired and then rehired. Okay, can't but wait. But I used to. I would do impressions of them. To them? To them. And did they I would make fun love of them. it? I, and they loved it. Yeah. I would do impressions of their voice and then the things they would do. And not in a disrespectful way, but in a way of like inclusion of yeah. like, do I do impressions? I make fun of people who I love. Yeah. And so I would make fun I, of them. I immediately understand what you're what you're talking about. There's there's an othering and a white glove sensitivity that yes. you in your time with them started to notice wasn't coming from them meaning yeah they didn't want it at all yeah they wanted to be involved they wanted to fold it in they wanted to bump mics <laughs> they wanted they to want to bump mics to, yeah they yeah. wanted to get roasted or whatever i not even roasted it was just they wanted to just be in it yeah and then i remember there were some people who were like that's not we don't do that here and i was like all right and then i was like oh and then i remember i came back and wait then, did they say we don't do that there and then you kept doing it and then you were let go or they just no i was fired and then that was like a, a reason why I was I was part of the reason, and then that person who fired me was fired, and then I was brought back. Wow! Why were they fired? They were doing your bits. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They didn't have the sauce this I stuff had. Kills. They weren't good at the impressions. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. To see a scene in a movie where a guy tries to do that and he's <laughs> not funny though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Does the, it- and the kids are like, "What?" Are you doing Malik right now? Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you doing Malik with Down syndrome? Trying to, <laughs> trying to be him? Because it's not guy. working. No. Yeah. And then they brought you back. They brought me back. And then did that sort of levity, <laughs> frivolity continue? Did you? I kind of. Yeah. I think I tried to. You know, I tried to just be light with it. I. I think it was just that it was. That it was not. Don't. Not everything is so serious. Even when things are very like drastic and people need meds and people need. Some, yeah. People need more taken care of. It's like yeah. it's a little bit more. A person. Yeah, treat everybody the yeah. Yeah. It was that there's no like, oh 
come okay there's no like they i didn't well, do I any of that, that they really didn't want you to do that tiring yeah I, Everybody does that to them. If everybody treats you the same way, it must get, just like any human person, it's like, this is really, really boring. Yeah. And I have to imagine that a, a friend that could, would be more interested in seeing you as a person and, and finding out what makes you laugh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, again, like everything we've talked about, I definitely see both sides. If I just walked in and <laughs> saw you doing it, I'd be like, I think we have to hit this guy with a fire extinguisher. Like, I don't think this is, we need you to get this guy out of here. And being like, I don't want to drink water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if that's, but you know what's so funny? That's the othering that can be so, I understand sensitivity, but what, like, intense, automatic, meaning not individually discerned, but just like an automatic, you know, sensitive, like hypersensitivity. Yeah. Uh, can steam clean a lot of intimacy and laughter. Like yeah, I, you can't go that that deep. Yeah, with a, with a person or just like you and can't have as much experience. Nothing makes me laugh harder than uh, people making fun of me. And and God help you if you do an impression of me to me. Yeah, I don't know if that means I have narcissistic personality disorder, but like I want to be like taken down by yeah. somebody that I love, and yeah. they do. James Adomian does it to me, and I just die. Yeah, that was kind of it. They, yeah. they and they loved it. That yeah. was that was the one thing. That I. That's what you figured out. That's what I figured out there. Make fun of, do impressions <laughs> yeah, just, of people. Well, it's interesting. I'm thinking about Paul Mercurio. He did warm up for The Daily Show, and I, I occasionally would fill in for him. Mm -hmm. So I would watch him do it. And I remember if there was somebody in a wheelchair or something. Yeah. He's doing all crowd work. He would immediately kind of do, and, and you know, it's a risk. Yeah. He would make jokes to the person, he'd talk to the person. Whatever it was, I, I'm not even in this day and age. I'm just saying, like, yes. And he, I always remember it. They were loving it, having a great time, and then, and that's always a risk because people pretend to have a great time. I hear, I can see the other yeah, side. Yeah, to, to I can see peace so that everybody else doesn't exactly. feel bad. Don't feel bad. I love this, and then yeah. they go home. I, I've been that person too. Yeah. But he did say something that I always remember. Uh, that he like he put his hand on them and and was like, see everybody here because they weren't laughing. He's uh -huh. like, they want me to treat you as, as another, but I'm going to treat you like I'm treating everybody. Uh -huh. And then he went and made fun of every single person in the crowd. Yeah. So, I mean, it has to be kind of like a, it reminds me of the Key and Peele sketch. Which, the oh, guy yeah. With the trachea, do the voice, do it. something about the voice. Yeah. And, and the guy was like. Talk about the burns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk about the burns. Yeah. I mean, I've had it a couple of times when I'm on stage where there's somebody like heckling a whole show. But I can just tell the way that they're heckling. I was like, I know this type of heckling. And I've stopped the show a couple of times. And then I've, I've kind of been like, I've said, do you have autism? And, and everybody in the crowd, I've had people in the crowd go like, whoa. And then I'm like, no, 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 not in a, like a, do you have autism? I'm like, are you on yeah. the spectrum? Yeah. And they go, yeah, I'm on the spectrum. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, this is how you're, you're having a good time then. The way that you're, this is how you're having a good time. Whoa. So you're, you're trying, you're engaging with the show because you're feeling a little bit of this is what you think it is the pressure of the of the social environment and they were like yeah and then i was like i gave a little bit of space for that and Whoa. but i but i felt the need at first to be like tell this guy to shut the fuck up yeah and but, I, but then i was like let me make it just a little just stop it for a second to be like do you do you see the world differently than everybody else right yeah. now and then he did and then we kind of like we like hashed it out and was like i like asked like what his um, not ticks. What are the words for it? Like, uh, what is what his needs were kind of yeah. to enjoy the show. I was like, what do you need to enjoy the show? And uh, kind of whoa, get and I and I kind of gave it to him for a second, and then it was uh, whoa. And I don't even know what I'm 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 saying with that exactly, but that was kind of uh, no. That's that's a part it. Where they both met. You're seeing a need. I'll relate to that story. Is I'll never forget. I was at the Boston Comedy Club in New York. And some guy was heckling. And look, I understand this is a little virtue signaling or whatever it's called, bigging yourself up. But I just said to the guy, everybody was telling him to shut the fuck up and all this stuff. And it's funny because there were like eight people there and one of them's heckling. <laughs> and I was just like, what? What's going on? This is yeah. back when my comedy persona wouldn't even allow for me to say shut up. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of talking about big league chew and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I had my only recourse, and something I'd still do to this day, I'd like to think, is I said, What's up? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Similar to you with the autism, and he, and he was just like, 
I, I couldn't remember if he just got divorced or if he lost his job, but something had happened that day. <laughs> and this sad bag of bones went to a comedy show yeah. and the show sucked and he was he wasn't going to lose twice. <laughs> no, he's a, I'm I'm funny. Some you guys I can't do this. I need this today. Please. No. <laughs> And this is all out loud, loud. Of course. Yeah. I need this. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You go up. Are you on the spectrum? No. Just no. rough day. Bad day. Bad day. Do you remember what happened to him? I. Th it was one of those two. Yeah. I think it might have been Job. Uh-huh. And he was fine the rest of the show. But that, that little bit of like, what do you need? Sometimes you need. And could the neediest person in the room, meaning the comedian, Begrudge another person. Well, we do. I mean, I do. I hate when people talk, talk and fuck. Well, up the show. yeah, um, but like, I don't know. And not to big up stand up so much as if it's so important. I think I do. Th I think it's very important, but I don't yeah. want to make it out that it is the most important thing. Yeah. But it, there is a lot of need involved, and people people show up with a lot of stuff going on. Oh People yeah. show up with a lot of expectation. Have you ever had uh, somebody come up to you after a show and be like, "I needed that." Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh. That's my opener. <laughs> yeah. I open now going, I need this. Does anyone else need this? And people cheer. And I'm like, I like remembering that my little traumas, big traumas, old traumas, just humiliations, embarrassments, let's work them all out. Uh huh. And I'm, it's really me trying to remember they are coming, hoping that the, the hard pressure of laughter will, will like brush off some dirt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'm agreeing. Mm -hmm. Did I ruin it? No. <laughs> We're allowed to have a lull. We're allowed to be quiet for a second. Lull, Don't let the ferociousness of modernity. <laughs> Can we say lull Akbar? Is that the lull is great? <laughs> Lullahu Akbar. Yeah, the lull is great. Lull is greater than the talking sometimes. Oh, my God. Yeah, if we learn nothing from the mushrooms. Um, so, oh, we, when did you get into drugs? Um... When you were in theater? I started smoking weed with kids. Oh, this is just weed. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in your stand-up you say... I, I say drugs because yeah. it's like, I'm because it's, what am I going to say? You yeah. know? I don't know. I, I thought did. you said hard drugs. No, I said I would rather do hard drugs oh, than eat pork. For some reason I was like, does Malik have some sordid past? Like no, a I would drink and I think I would drink and, and I, I mean, I'll still smoke weed sometimes. Yeah. But it was like, I just kind of, I think I was just exercising. But never pork. The bit I is did true. pork a little bit, a little bit, but then, but that was the one that I stopped before everything. I'm like, this is what am I doing? Yeah, like, oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm doing this, then how do I even? I don't eat pork, and yeah. I, what? I was in a restaurant with Phil Rosenthal, name name yes. dropping. So he took me to this incredible Chinese restaurant in Canada. I believe it might have been in Vancouver. It might have been. I one remember. We did yeah, that we were talking about. Yeah, I seen yeah. Phil Rosenthal that day. He had done the show before us. Yeah. This was the you same sat, day. You sat in the green room with us. I remember you talking about this. And I ate. He was like, there's a little pork in this. And uh -huh. it was like a crispy fried rice. I, I can't even describe it. They don't have it at P.F. Chang's. Let's just say that. Yeah. This is like real shit. Yeah. Because Vancouver's got like a really legit uh, Chinese population. So I'm eating this stuff. He's like, the chef, like when the chef dies, this recipe goes. <laughs> like he's like, there's no... It's gone. Yeah. Like, and, and he grows certain fruits and things and spices in his yard and he brings it. So like the rare, and I was like, okay, I'm going to eat a little pork. Yeah. And I put this thing in my mouth and I was like, I put this thing in my mouth. I put this rice dish in my mouth and I literally like got emotional at how delicious it was. Wow. But I still, you know. Yeah, I cheated, and it was well, nice. Well, that's the that's the the cheating or the not of it. Like I'm that that's the thing about the rigidness is even now, even now in this like I don't drink, I don't, I do these I do these things that I'm supposed to not do, or yeah. I don't do these things I'm supposed to not do. And I'm wondering like what how how much are those my rules? I don't know even. Right. I'm like I wonder what situation comes up and how much I am denying the present to not do something right. or to do it. Right. I mean, like even with me, like quitting smoking a little bit of, I'm always like, well, what, when, what comes up that I will, you know what I mean? That you will smoke. That I will or that I, yeah. that it yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. something comes, I don't know because well, sorry, I don't want to yeah. deny the world sometimes. I don't know. Like oh, the poor thing. I don't know. I, I, I was just going to apologize for always mentioning the new Testament, but I just, know it please i'm come up to my eyeballs in quran all the time 
Please tell me about the Bible for, for Christ's sake. Go. I mean, didn't Muhammad say Christ was a great prophet? He loves him. He loves him. He's his, he's, uh, he's his prophet. There you go. He's his messenger, buddy. Yeah. These are the these are the big three. The big five. Big five? Big five. What are the other two? There's Muhammad, Isa. Oh, I meant the religions. I meant oh, uh, there's Judaism, five messengers. Christianity, yeah, yeah. And, and Islam. Oh, there's five messengers. Five okay. messengers. Yeah. All right. I've... Not every day I'm out religious, but I loved it. 25 prophets, five messengers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah, not bad. Jesus would say, uh, you know, he's, he's basically just wandering around with 12 dudes, and they would pick grain on the Sabbath, and people were always asking him, like, if a goat falls in a hole on the Sabbath, can you get it out? You know, Jewish legalistic questions. Yeah. And Jesus was always like, you know, there's that line I think about it all the time as I ate that pork. It's not what goes in a man's mouth that makes him pure or unpure. It's what comes out of his mouth, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus was pretty, look, I, I can't say I have it figured out. I'm just saying there's a lot of verses that are like, will you stop? It's like, it's like your mushroom thing. Will you stop? Will you stop with all the rules? You the think, rules are just God to get here. Exactly. You're already there. Maybe the rules aren't the, the thing. That's right. The rules are paving the way to the thing, and once you're at the thing, you can. Uh, I say this all the time, but Ramana Maharshi says, like, the 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 tradition is the stick that you stoke the fire with. The fire is your awakening. Well, once the fire is big enough, you even throw the stick in. And I was like, oh my god, I like that. Fucking dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these, yeah, all the 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 no pork, the don't drink. It's just to get to the the place get to the place and like yeah, sometimes i'm like well if the place is i don't know i don't know how much i don't know how much my rules are my rules yet yeah. even no and you shouldn't you're you're wiser than your years for sure but i i still don't know what uh, obviously i don't know what's going on but like it's it's nice to see you on this path it's awesome thank you i mean i i was thinking about coming on this podcast because i don't p i started the i learned about comedy listening to this podcast you did this is how I know about comedy at all is listening to you. Oh my God. So, oh, because you're over there going like, can someone explain this to me? And then podcast. It's truly. Yeah, yeah. I was over there and I was like working at Walmart and I used to go to gold's gym across the street and I would listen to you interview people. And I would learn about who was who and yeah. what was what bits. And yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, and meeting Kumail the other night was like, yeah. I was like, like, and now being here was like very, um, it feels very like surreal, but also, but this is how I like got, remind me where I started off on this point. Oh man. Uh, that podcasts are how I was saying, like, I think you were saying like being on the show matters to you because you learned about comedy through oh, this. Oh goodness. But we were talking about oh, pork no. and it gets you to the place. Oh no, this is ridiculous. The rules. Oh, I had such a good point. Not drinking, not eating pork or get you to the place. Oh, but God. once you're in the place. And then you were saying, God, how did you say the lull is greater? <laughs> <laughs> Allahu Akbar, whatever. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. I can't remember, but uh, it'll come back. Um, but he, but that's how you filled in those blanks and those gaps, learning what what comedy was. Yes, I can't remember. There was something I really. Oh, wanted that's to tell what you. that's what you're like. But I don't know where that was going. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just like knowing that that's the case. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I'll. Uh, it'll come back to me. You ever, come back to me. It's okay. You ever see a ghost? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I saw one time, I think, I don't know, it could have been eye floaters, but I I, uh, <laughs> I saw these things in the field that looked like Pac-Man ghosts, and I was like, all right, I don't, I don't think I ghosts actually look like that. <laughs> He's eating dots. Yeah. These ghosts are eating dots. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever almost died? Um... I've had experiences like the one that I told you about. Um, Which one? With just kind of like melding into something oh, and not yeah. not exactly vanishing. I've had I've been on a hike and then I've had um, a rock fly past my head. That's a good one. And uh, and just look up and then like have like a bunch of like other hikers be like, whoa, oh god. And then but it it just missed me and Ugh. I would have been like, oh yeah, if that if that connected, I would have. Uh, but not anything. Not anything real. Would you rather that or the long, uh, drawn out hospital bed or, or, you know, hospice bed? I think I'm a hospice bed guy. Mm. I want to like have a, a good death and, you know, yeah. kind of like fade out. Or 
Sometimes you think about the the quality of the 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 rock during the hike, where you're just like, yeah, pink. Yeah, that'd be. Sometimes I'd like the James Dean out, you know, just kind of yeah. go speeding up into a turn to avoid a semi, and you're just yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I, you look, either way. Hey, I'll take it either way. I'll take. Hey, <laughs> however, hey. <laughs> hey what about? I'll take whatever you got. Can you tell me about the time you laughed really, 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 really hard in your life? Maybe the hardest you've ever laughed. Yeah, I. Um, well, I've laughed so much. I got to laugh. I've gotten to laugh a lot so far in my life. I, yeah. I feel like the people I know are the funniest, and I'm very lucky to. It's the best part of being a comedian. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be in a diner so many times, and I'll be like, nobody laughs like this. I'll be like, this is not like how people live their lives. I completely like, agree. It was amazing. But we are kind of. I was talking to a friend about this, where I was like, of all the things you can obsess about, like you know, chewing gum or basketball mm -hmm. picking laughter as the human phenomenon that you're like we're only gonna talk and think about this yeah and then you get so obsessed about it and then it kind of permeates your diner life and now yeah. you're just laughing really hard it's one of the fringe benefits for sure it's amazing yeah. yeah i've had um i've had times with uh with john my friend john who got me this job and uh just you know those like you know when you do a bit that like somehow like tears apart the whole world and then puts it back together but you put it back together in the way that you decide <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean we yeah. uh yeah we've just been sitting there and with, i don't know we've had we've had these just had characters over the years we have this one character named mo who's just like a lebanese guy disgruntled lebanese guy who goes into a shawarma shop and asks them to put everything on it <laughs> And this gives you the giggles. This gives us the giggles. We just kind of would talk about this guy going in there and asking for um, for every every little bit of every single ingredient in the sandwich. <laughs> and then the guy behind the counter not even knowing what to do with all of it. And he's, he, he's just telling him, put lots, buddy. Bloody. Yeah, tomatoes, lots, lots, lots of everything. And to the point where it's it's kind of filled up the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> and some that this made sense to us in this... Uh, in this situation, yeah, where just like this guy is asking for everything on the sandwich, like he wants, like this is how he's talking about the world. <laughs> like the guy behind the counter is like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, no, buddy, keep putting it. Keep. That is the universe. He's just keep. Yeah, there's keep a cosmic it. joke to this. There's it's a like, cosmic now put a bicycle it. on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Put yourself in the sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, last yeah. step is you get in the sandwich. You get in the sandwich, and then and the, and there's no way to wrap it up. Wrap it up from inside. And then this you fold is, the whole sandwich into it. Did you see the movie uh, Schenectady, New York? I'm halfway through it right now. So you're only, what do you mean? I'm halfway through it. Oh my God, Phil Hoffman. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway through it. That's so sad. <laughs> Wait, are you watching it currently? Yeah. What are the fucking chances of that? Yeah, I'm halfway through. He's built up the whole world. He's basically putting lots in the play. He's put yeah. everything into the sandwich of this play. That's the sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That play, it's not a spoiler. It. You'll still enjoy it, but it's very sad and it's very long and it's hard to get through, but it's great. Uh, but it, he wants to make a play that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's how it ends. Is And it, the last step is, I, I won't ruin it, but I mean, like, it's 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 what you're talking about. It's folding everything in. Yeah, it's everything yeah. in the sandwich. And uh, there was a time me and John were, like, just sitting across from each other and we we, we we somehow got it that we were, like, we were putting everything into the sandwich. And it, it, it made me, like, laugh so hard that I almost felt like I flipped inside out. Oh, my God. You know those God. laughs? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really beautiful. What a great answer. It reminded me, my friend Ern and I grew up, he, had, he dated a, a South American girl and her father was incredibly strict. Mm -hmm. So we always used to do an impression of him going, if you touch her, I will kill you. <laughs> but then that became, <laughs> we'd go transversely, if you kill her, I will touch you. <laughs> He's kind of like hitting on him. He's like, if you kill her, yeah. I will touch you. And it's like, we wow, we had like math jokes, like the transitive proper. I don't know what it the, is, yeah, but the, it was you something. Flipped it completely. We flipped it. You and, flipped it and, and having him say bit, and it transversely. Worked, transversely. <laughs> if you kill her, I will touch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I, uh, I wanted to just go back and say, I don't remember what I was trying to say, but I think what I was... In, in me explaining all of where I kind of how I got to where I'm at through yeah. through everything and got into entertainment and everything, you were just kind of and I've talked about being kind of held along. I I learned a lot from 
from from you and from your and it kind of it helped me kind of expand yeah where I was going and and trying to learn about these things and that's I, great. and I uh, I really appreciate that you're, that's that's what I was trying to you're say you're very welcome man yeah. I couldn't believe in you more I think you're so funny he did Largo it's me and Kumail and fucking whoever. And you had the best set of the night. It was incredible. Oh. Well, Peter Kim, now the whatever sounds like I'm putting down Peter Kim. Peter yeah. Kim was also great. I'm just saying like you murdered. And I was just like, I don't know. It just feels very inevitable to me that you're going to do whatever you want to do. And I know you want to act and do serious stuff, but not but. I also think your stand-up is going to be huge. And I really sincerely think this is going to be one of those episodes like Pete Davidson did the show when he was like, I don't know, 20. I know. And it was like, yeah, remember? Yeah. And it was like, at that point, believe it or not, it was sort of like, not that I was doing Pete Davidson a favor, but a little bit. Like, here's a up and coming comic. I'll have him on the show. And that I think this is going to be one of those episodes. No shit. Oh, shit. So thanks, man. Well, I'm going to try to imagine my 18 year old self listening to it when it comes yeah, out. Yeah. At see the what that Gold's Gym. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, at the Gold's Gym at two in the morning, being like, am I a psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> am I a psychopath hitting Lifting a body bag? Two. Listening to you interview Hari Kondabolo. <laughs> 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 Putting on boxing gloves to be like, I don't think this is what other people are listening to in their headphones right now. Oh my God. I love when obsession goes right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. The same level of obsession pointed in a different direction, and you're just a, a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, it could have very easily happened. <laughs> but we live in a culture that values the guy yeah. who listened to Hari Kondabolu at 2 in the morning while you worked out. Yeah. And I'm so glad. Do you feel good? I feel good. I feel good, man. All right. That That's, was lovely. It was incredible. Thank you. Wow. Would you say... We've had people say keep it crispy in, in Arabic before, and there's I've, no... I've tried to... I, yeah, there's no... I don't, yeah. You say like keep it crunchy or fried or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's not quite the same. It's not the same. Let's not do it. Yeah. Would you just give us a, regu a regular, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that, West Westrocentric? Yeah, yeah. Like American is Eurocentric. American. Yeah, Eurocentric. Yeah, yeah. English is regular. Let's just do it in English. Uh, keep it crispy <laughs> to get us out of here. Okay. Keep it crispy. We will. Allahu Akbar. God is greater. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome, man. Oh, my God, man. Awesome. Wow. You made it weird. You made it weird. You made it weird. Oh, yeah. You made it weird. You made it weird. You made it weird.